Awesome. All right. So thank you so much for coming on the show. It's great to finally meet you because this is how we meet each other nowadays through Zoom. So why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization and what you're passionate about? Sure. Um, My name is Kim Carson, and I am the CEO and founder of Parallax Futures. And we are a nonprofit organization that aims to bring kind of multidimensional diversity and creativity to the AI talent ecosystem. Mm. So uh, through leadership, through talent, through creation. Um, And uh, I'm super passionate about getting groups of very uh, diverse and creative people together to solve big technical problems. I I come from a tech background, worked in big tech and academia, um, and there's nothing more exciting to me than getting a bunch of people who don't think they're technical around a technical (laughs) um, ideation process and then uh, having them like knock it out of the park. Fantastic. I love it. So, so how did you get to this point? Like what, what drove you to, to start this? Yeah. So um, I've been um, in AI since about 2014. Um, It's that old? I thought they just came out this last uh, year. Come on. It's older than that. (laughs) Most people don't know. Um, But I was actually working for um, a big tech company and was building, um, I feel actually kind of lucky. I was building something that was for the betterment of society. We were trying to build a chat bot pre-chat GPT. Nice. Um, 2014. Well, you're so early. (laughs) (laughs) And, and, and the 10 years ago, can you believe it? (laughs) The idea was to um, give this, this, um, this AI to um, title one teachers, um, K-12 teachers um, who had impacted classrooms to allow them to kind of personalize learning pathways. Oh, nice. So um, I always say I feel lucky because I didn't come at AI from like this big, scary place. I came at it from, oh, wow, like look at the potential that we can actually solve kind of big global problems with this type of technology. And so I started thinking about things that we all are struggling with and probably even more today, um, things like mental health and loneliness and and, um, things that actually unite us across Mm -hmm. the globe. Um, that are uniquely human and how we could actually be designing the AI and using the AI to solve those problems. You mean all the big problems that we should be working on instead of how to get more followers on Twitter, right? <laughs> wow, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and, and, and you know, one of, one of the things that was really kind of an aha for me was that all the rhetoric is usually around how AI is going to take jobs away. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, actually, I think that there's a place where we can start thinking about job creation, but you have to have a different mindset in order to do that. And so, you know, one of the things that uh, drives me at Parallax Futures is kind of this creation of a new job category. So Mm -hmm. um, there is a space in the overflow between these creative people and these technical people. And um, I I think that, you know, we're well positioned to kind of bring, bring that to fruition. We're trying to create the community to do that. Right. You almost need a liaison between those those two types of people because I see the same thing when I was doing futurist work. It's like you yeah. need a liaison between the futurists and the business people because the futurists are like their stuff is great, and the business people their stuff is great, but they can't <laughs> get these people to talk to each other. They're uh, like, and it's not going to make other. any money today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it'll make money in ten years. But yes. I don't care about that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You got it. Well, that, that's fantastic. So, so how does this, so when did you start, when did you start and, and what was like, can you tell me more about what it, what, it, what you do? Yeah. So um, we're, we're very new. So um, we started, I started with a co-founder, a like prior iteration of this, that was very academic in nature um, mm-hmm. back in 2021. And then I pivoted the organization um, just last year in this, in, in the spring of last year um, to be more looking at this job creation area. So Um, I always like to say to people, you know, um, IDEO was to design thinking as parallaxes to conceptual technology. Oh, Um, nice. We really think that we're going to bring this kind of new way of ideating and innovation and thinking to the world. Um, And that's really, you know, what we're trying to do. And so um, we got very lucky um, with a uh, a generous check from Reid Hoffman, um, who is big in the AI space. Um, And that kind of launched us in September and propelled us um, to where we are today. And so we started our first group of fellows um, in January. 
Um, they're they're they complete in May, and so they go through um, three modules that we call Learn, Explore, and Build. Um, learn is is for them to actually learn the conceptual analysis process. So you think about that like um, old design thinking, like here's your field guide mm -hmm. and here's all the activities you can do. Um, that's the our Learn module, and then and then they go through Explore, which is looking at some people that are already in our community that are building products from this conceptual analysis lens and kind of looking at how they did it um, with an aim to inspire them to get to build, which is like their own thing. Um, right. And then we end with a showcase. Um, and so uh, that's that's where we are. That's where we are today. So we're getting ready for the showcase. They've just they're just wrapping up the explore phase of their of of their fellowship, and now they're going to start presenting to us what their ideas are um, for the build phase. Wow, that sounds super exciting. So are are you p pitching to people who can actually fend, fund some of these ideas or? Yes, yes. Nice. And so nice. that's part of the showcase, right? So we do have people that are from big tech, which is kind of interesting to me. So we have people that are doing R&D and AI product development um, from the biggies, from Microsoft and Google and, and all those guys. Um, but then we have a bunch of folks that are independent and um, uh, those folks, we really want to support um, these ideas and help them take it to marketplace. So maybe it's getting a job, maybe it's not. Maybe it's building your own company, maybe it's building your own product. Um, and so we want the showcase to be infused with all sorts of those people so that nice. um, they can see what our fellows can do. Yeah. Well, I find that these large tech companies, they they look to these to these groups and people to, for their new ideas. They can't generate them internally anymore. So they go outside and they go... You guys take the risk. You guys come yeah, up with something new, it. and then we can we can pick you up. <laughs> yes, exactly. But they're the ones who can actually take the risk and not have to worry about it. It's the rest of us who are like, oh my god, is this gonna, you know, am I gonna, you know, not make any money to to get yes. this thing done? So exactly, exactly. So yeah, we'll we'll have all sorts of folks there, and then um, uh, one one new thing that's coming is that I am actually um kind of building my own um incubator um oh, so nice. that there's fellows that want to stay with me um then they can stay with me and I can guide them for another year into how they create companies and products from from what they've done in their final project fantastic so how, how do you qualify who like how do you select the fellows and how do they how do they get into the program yeah, so they have to be nominated by people in our network, um, um, and so that's uh, a primary criteria. That's actually been really helpful for us because um, we have kind of this this secret band of conceptual technologists that are out and about, and they will go and find people. Spies, say, basically, right? Yes, hi. <laughs> you're thinking really philosophically about the things you're building. Have you ever thought about maybe going and doing this fellowship? And so nice. um, that's how we, we source them. And then, of course, I spend a lot of time um, doing my own kind of scouting. Um, I spent a lot of time. We, we were really underrepresented um, with... Um, uh, African Americans and and people of color, and so I spent a whole week last year at Afrotech, and nice. I was like secretly scouting. People were like, "Are you here looking for a job?" I'm like, "Not me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that reminds me. That reminds me of a meetup I went to once where, uh, like, the VCs would have a certain color sticker, and the people uh -huh. looking for work would have a certain color sticker, and the people who yep. are giving out jobs employers would have a certain color sticker and the people who were all looking for work were like were treated like lepers they were like off in the oh, corner yeah. nobody ever talked to them <laughs> i hope it wasn't like that <laughs> no it wasn't it was actually people were like oh you're here like you're doing you know like you just don't have a booth you know because nice. <laughs> i'm nice. like no <laughs> i'm undercover and we just had a great conversation and so here's my card <laughs> right i love it i love it that's great so what area are you focused on particular technology areas or particular issue areas? like what do you focus on anything in particular? Yeah, in, we're in right this? now we're focused on AI um, primarily, um, uh, but er, emergent technology kind of broadly. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if next week we start to talk about quantum and we start talking about, you know, bioengineering and, and those types of things. Um, but really, you know, coming at it from like these big kind of conceptual um, concept, concepts, right? Like, so mm -hmm. the concept of truth or intelligence or things wow. like wellness. That, that is big. About, or education. Truth is amazing. I, I, we, we don't have it anymore. It's not out there anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. I have society. a fellow that's working on that. that it's can like we're in an anti a long conversation almost, with you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and all the reasons why, right? Yeah. Truth is almost <laughs> impossible to find. 
Exactly. Exactly. Um, wow, that is a so, big problem. How do you decide which big problems to work on? Those are huge. Um, I don't. I, I allow okay. our fellows to drive that for us. And they usually come with something that they're really grappling with, either, mm. you know, internally or even externally. So the the fellow that I'm talking about that's working on truth is was actually doing his PhD in this area at the same time that he stumbled wow. across fellowship and so so it was a great synergy for him he just finished his dissertation and so he's going to defend soon um and yeah it was like uh, he was like i really want i really care about truth and i'm like lots of people really care about (laughs) you know like why don't you come do that here so that that was how that happened well that's beautiful so in, in the end what kind of output would come out of something like say this this truth study yeah, so um, from him, I think it will mostly be around uh, maybe kind of uh, language and common language, and and um, I can see all sorts of applications. I'm a little bit older than him, so I'm like, oh, there's like policy applications, <laughs> there's this applications, and, you know, I don't think he's thinking about that because yeah, he's a little- yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, um, I really do see there there that he might come out with, you know, some kind of um, just generalized uh, language or things that we can agree on, you know, almost like an alignment um, around the concept of truth so that we can really talk about it in a, in a way where we're all coming from the same place. Otherwise, we're just talking past each other, which is what's right. happening. Yeah. So tell me a bit about the job creation aspect of this, of this, because it sounds like you're creating all this great stuff, but how does it lead to job creation? Yeah, so I'm, um, we're actually um, developing and we'll have a, a skills badge for these people. Mm. So like a, you know, kind of a blockchain enabled education skilling. Of course, it has to be and, blockchain enabled. Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> See, I, I figure once we figure out what the actual truth is, then we should put it in the blockchain. So no, that's it a good idea. Be... <laughs> Do you want to be a fellow, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> sure, you'll take me. <laughs> put the truth so, in the blockchain. Yes, exactly. So you know, I I just like I've been in tech for a long time, and I think about you know, like we were talking about design thinking. I think about the this day where like all of a sudden it was, you know, you would never create anything, whether that was policy or a product or anything, without somebody who has been officially credentialed in design thinking on the team. Right. Um, so that's what I'm trying to build is like this kind of skill credential and get some recognition for it in the HR marketplace. And so. Um, my my um, chief strategy marketing officer always hates me because I make these big audacious, audacious claims. But of course, that's my job. You have to. That's what startups uh, do. If you don't do that, then you're not a startup. What are you doing, right? <laughs> exactly. <And> so... <laughs> you may as well just get a corporate wagey job. Exactly. I mean... <laughs> and so um, our audacious goal right now is to build 3,000 conceptual technologists um, by 2030. Nice. Well, you'll probably beat that goal easily. I can see that. (laughs) (laughs) Easily, easily, easily. Well, you find it funny. It's the same thing. It's like every technological change, like every huge change, the internet or whatever. uh, When we're ahead of it, everyone's like, oh my God, jobs lost, job lost, job lost, job lost. And then when we're behind it, it's like, we need people. We need people. We need people. Yeah, we didn't plan for this. And so isn't it nice to kind of try to start from the beginning? (laughs) And every time it's always the same thing. Oh, but this time it's different, right? But it's never different. It's always the same thing every single time. No, it's not. It actually was really interesting. I was talking to a group of um, kind of college advisors um, type folks. And and I was like, listen, you know, um, right now the, with prompt engineering and these LLMs, like you can just know English. You don't mm-hmm. have to go learn how to code. Like, what does that do for the, the, the playing field? Yep. Right. What does that do for English majors, which we said mm-hmm. before were not necessary? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it kind of turns everything on. Oops. Its... <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so you could just see the light bulbs going off in the room, yeah. like, wow. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, so it brings people into tech that didn't ever think that they would be in tech. Yeah. But and that's the thing that I really love needed. about it. Yeah. That's the thing that I really love about it is the democratization. It's kind of like YouTube, right? So prior to YouTube, nobody had the reach. Like there was yep, all right. these pockets, pockets of creativity all over the world, but you never even yep. heard about it. Yep. And YouTube democratized it so not all of a sudden you know i could be watching some kid in nigeria do something that i never would have been able to see before yeah that's the same thing with 
this democratization is like somebody who can't who has an amazing idea but they can't conceptualize it they can't create it you now ai it. can help them do that and i can't got believe it. that that's not a good thing that's a great that's thing a great thing it it gives like it's it levels the playing field in like this amazing way i feel like um yeah and that's really kind of cool for me yeah yeah but on the one hand it will create a whole bunch of crap there will be a bunch of crap oh. out there but there will also be diamonds there already <laughs> is a bunch of crap <laughs> Every day there seems to be a headline. There'll just be more of it. <laughs> See, maybe that's another big audacious goal. You should have like a, some way to filter out the diamonds from the crap because I mean. Yes, yes. If you have any ideas, let me know. <laughs> I just get AI to do this for, to do it for exactly. me. This is cool. So, so how often are you going to be doing this thing? Is it, is it, I mean, what was the duration and, and all that good stuff? Yeah, so the fellowship um, runs for about five months um, and we're, we'll do um, at least two cycles of fellowship a year. We're toying with the size of the cohort. So it could be that the next cohort is much larger than this one. Um, I, and that's my goal is to get it to be much larger than this one. But uh, we're also looking at this being the first skew. So thinking mm. about like what other programmatic things can we do? Um, we've heard from the people from big tech that are in our fellowship book, like boy, um, I don't know if, uh, you know, my company would pay for everybody to go through this for five months. But if you could do like a one week, week curriculum or a boot mm. camp do it just for us um that would be a way to 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 really reach a lot more people and so those are things that we're building right now yeah but don't they understand they need that long term away from the office training to actually get to the so real because, core innovative stuff yeah it's so funny because they on the one hand they say this and on the other hand they say oh the the space that i get to think yeah. Um, it's actually one of the most valuable things. And I'm like, well, you just said that you wanted like a weekend <laughs> program. And now you're saying that you want space to think. And so, you know, like, or, doesn't that yeah. Sound well, they want, want <laughs> they want both. They want both. Can you so clone fun. our employees so, so they stay at, the, at, the, at their desk coding? Yeah. And at yep. the same time, you know, go through this program. If you could just yes. clone them, you know, that'd exactly. be great. Exactly, exactly. Um, but we did structure the program so that they have like kind of two intense weeks where they're, mm. they're on site with us. And the rest of the time is is online on Zoom, um, you know, kind of hybrid stuff. And try we try to do it so that they can still work their job, right? right. Um, so it's like almost like, hey, you get this little nugget every week of, of time where you get to step away from that that desk job and, and actually think big and dream. Oh yeah. And people desperately do. I mean, they mm -hmm. can't, they can't innovate if they just say, sort of sit. It's like, it's, it's people sit and do the same thing physically day after day after day. And then you ask them to innovate. They really need to, they need to experience new things. They need to be in new places, meet That's new right. people. Yeah. I was going to say new people is a big part of it, right? Like, so going back to our, the cohort and, and its complement. So I was saying, you know, we call it multidimensional diversity. So we're, mm. we're looking at not just kind of racial, ethnic, you know, sexual um, diversity, but also um, looking at like generational and disciplinary and like, you know, career experience. Oh yeah. You have to look at everything. You have to look yeah, at Yeah. So we're looking yeah. at every, you know, neurodivergence and capability. And we're just looking at all of these different things um, and trying to get as much of a mix as you can, because I think that that's helps with innovation as well. It's like, you know, oh, yeah. the more you bring to the party, um, the more idea, the more the kind of light bulb moments happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I was going to ask your business the model, but I think you you talked about it there. You say people have to pay to go through the program or their or their organizations have to pay for them to go through the program. Yeah. So um, right now we charge tuition to the people who can do it, um, but that's not all of the folks. So um, most of the uh, people that are coming from tech backgrounds are the people that are paying. Um, and then we have scholarships for uh, for others. Um, and that's the way that I'd like to keep it so that, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd love to get to a model where we can get um, the the big companies to pay for the the other folks. Um, so, right. that, <laughs> right. um, so that we're, you know, the people they can afford it benefiting <laughs> are the people that are actually, you know, shelling out the money. And so, yeah. yeah, that's the way that it works. Very cool. So what process do you go through to select? I mean, is there a filtration process or what, what do you, what do, you yes. do to decide? Yeah. 
once people are nominated, they receive an invitation. The invitation is to the application. The application consists of like a one minute video where we ask you to talk about yourself and some, some of the things that you have. And then um, uh, based on those, we have an admissions committee um, mm -hmm. and that committee uh, watches all those videos. And then they sit and they um, decide who they want to interview. And there's a longer um, interview process. And so you will um, get interviewed by one or two of the folks on our team. Um, um, and and then we go through, uh, you know, I had a little bit of a stint in academia, so I know how to make one of those like admissions grids like nobody's business. So you go through this <laughs> matrix. <laughs> of stuff. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that's that's the way that we do it, um, and then we we come up with our magic with our magic number at the end of it. Nice, nice, very cool. And where do you see these, like, as, when people sort of pop out of the system at the end, where do you see them going? Like, what, what's your aspirations for them? Oh, my aspirations for them is that they're 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 making they're making companies and 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 um, products, and they're creating jobs that are changing the world. So we're mm. thinking. About, they're really thinking about big, big things. They're not thinking about how to get more people to spend more yes, time. Yes, please, the high hanging fruit. Yes, the high hanging fruit is what we need. <laughs> but they're thinking about kind of big global challenges, but not just challenges, also possibilities. Like, mm. what are we not thinking about? I think that's the one of the cool things about AI too is that it can take us into this space um, of like not just solve the problem, but also like what could happen, right? right. Like, so like the space in between the speculation and the and the concrete that's really exciting. So did you use AI at all in, in creating the program or in during the oh, program yeah. or? Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I use AI all the time. I, you know, like I said, since I've been in it since 2014, it's, it's like fairly. Standard. No, no, no. Last year, so, last year. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> only chat GPT right now. <laughs> that's right. It's never, no, I've never heard of it. What is this thing? AI. Just... <laughs> um, I, I, I always tell people, I'm like, you can tell, know my age because I still sometimes refer to it as cognitive computing, which was mm -hmm. like. The precursor to AI because we didn't want yep. to scare anybody. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> that exactly, gives me you're away. dating yourself in this in <laughs> <Yes>. the industry. <laughs> that gives me away just a little bit, but I use it pretty standardly, like every day and half since since I started. Um, and so it's always funny to me when people um, are really scared of it and mm. they don't even that they're using it so many times. Like one of the the big ones for me that's always funny is. Um, Spotify, right? Like, so people yeah. are like, I love my Spotify, but I hate AI. It's really scary. And I'm like, what do you think? What do you think? Tell <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> you know what that Spotify is using. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's yeah. Really funny. Just don't tell me it's been using AI. Otherwise, I'll stop listening to it, right? Exactly. No. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, I, I posted something the other day that I help, AI helped me write. And somebody said, did AI write that? And I said, no, no, no. Z did you use AI for that? And I said, I used it, it with, I, yeah. I wrote that with AI, not, yeah. I think like, that's I didn't, where we AI didn't go. do it. Yeah. yeah, that's where we need to go. It's not a little replacement for us as humans, right? Um, it's a helper and, a, and, and can be a guide and maybe can even guide us into spaces that we are not thinking about. Um, exactly. So that's the thing that, like I said, is really exciting to me is like, where could it lead, where could it lead us into these yeah. spaces? But there's still stuff that we, that's uniquely human that we, we do. Oh yeah, uh, but the, and we the, can continue to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think the biggest misconception is that people think that they're talking to a computer right. when they're talking to AI, when they're actually just talking to sort of the stuff that human beings have already created, and all it's doing is putting it back in different. It's like right. Lego blocks. It's Lego blocks of humans created stuff, but yep. the AI is just reconstructing it and right. sending it back to you. So you're really working when you work with AI. You're really working with humanity. That's right. That's right. And so, you know, that's why I think it's really important that the AI reflects humanity. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's kind of the 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 underpinning of of parallaxis is to make sure that we're all in there. Fantastic. Yeah, so, yep. it's time to think like a futurist. It's ten, it's ten years out, the year twenty thirty four. Where do you think we'll be? Where do you think you'll be? Where do you think parallax will be in ten years? Oh, well, I've, I've, I've failed miserably <laughs> if I'm still at Parallax. <laughs> I think Parallax will Come be... Come on, Parallax will be like a university yeah. by that time, right? <laughs> Parallax, I, you. <laughs> yes, I, I would love for Parallax. I think um, 
for Parallax to be that IDEO, to be that Stanford D school, to be that like big thing around this competency and this new way of innovation. Um, I just mean that I think that uh, as with any great NGO, it shouldn't be on me. Um, you know, I've actually failed if if I haven't been able to have it live beyond me. And so that's really right. what I'm trying to say is like, it really should be, um, you know, the next the next generation of, of innovators yep. pick it up and run with the ball. You could create a create a process and sell it like a franchise to other schools. You could say yes. it's, the, it's the parallax model. You know, are you using exactly. the parallax model? This course was designed around the parallax model or something like that. Yes. There's lots of ways it can go. Exactly, exactly. And I think all of those ways are super, super exciting. Um, I, th I hope in, in by 2034, we're looking at, you know, this as a global phenomenon. Um, so really thinking about not just, you know, what's happening here in the US and in Silicon Valley, which is, I think, what we hear about all the time. Oh, yeah. But but the far reaches, like you were saying, like with YouTube, right? Like you can see um, somebody who's a conceptual technologist and using the parallax method in 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 the remote places in the world, and they're actually using it to improve their communities. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I find it really it, it's so one way. It works so one, much one way where they go, well, we have to show the emerging markets how to do things, and it's like, wait a minute, there's just as much great creative stuff coming from elsewhere than there is from here. And we need to just share everything. Oh, I mean, that's absolutely. my absolutely. Uh, initial vision of the internet was that if it would just allow every human being to speak to every other human being, like connect with every other human being without these intermediaries in between, then we'd be a lot better off. I think so. I think so. I think we would realize that there's we have a lot more in common than we actually have that's different. Exactly. Um, I, I, your your story just um, reminded me that I met with someone last week, and they were they work actually in like the climate field and sustainable farming and that kind of stuff. And they were like, "Did you hear about this remote group of Nepalese women farmers that are using AI?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> But I need <laughs> that is I love that. I love that. And they should be, damn it. Why yes. not? <laughs> More of that, please. <laughs> yeah. No, that's I I I'm a firm believer in, you know, giving people the tools to do these things. Like no matter where you are or what yeah. you're doing. And, yeah. it, and anything that sort of stops you, like if I'm saying oh, or like like what's happening now with Elon suing open AI to say it should be open, right? I mean, any kind of monolithic entity going, well, we have to control what AI does. I think that's totally wrong. We need to let it, let the, let humanity yeah. take it and run with it. Yeah, I think so. Cause I think there's at the end of the day, you know, um, as, as a futurist, there's, I always feel like there's more of us um, in terms of uh, on the side of optimism and abundance than there are of them. Yes, uh, and so if we could just reach each other and work with each other, we would see that, and and yeah. boy, wouldn't that be cool? We have to just bypass the decelerators and say, "Listen, you like you know, just sit over there. Let us yeah, do our sit thing." Over there. You go sit in the corner, and, <laughs> and, and, and we'll go fix it. You don't have to wear the dunce camp. You just just go sit in the corner. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly oh man so this is this is fantastic um so tell me uh, like if somebody wants to get in touch with you or uh, inquire about the the fellowship into yeah, it or whatever absolutely yeah, anybody just let me know listening. how do how do we how do they do that yeah yeah uh, anybody who's listening can definitely um now you're part of of the community because you know me and so i can nominate you um for the fellowship and would love to do so and you can just go to our website which is um parallaxfutures.org Fantastic. And I'll put that in the show notes. So if anybody wants to go directly there, they can do that. So thank you so much. This has been great. Hey, maybe we'll connect on LinkedIn because I have some ideas. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Great talking with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. Bye.